Hello, hello. If you are here and you can see and hear me okay, could you let me know? Hey, Tammy, I see you. Does everything look and sound okay? I'll just wait to hear before I start rambling. You see a different screen. What do you see? How about that, Tammy? I just had my um, thing different, like I had a border around my screen. Hey, Patty. Hi, Jenny. Okay, Jenny says that she can see and hear fine. Sorry, I was fiddling around with my settings. Hey, Robin. And uh, that's why you saw that blue border, Tammy. It, hopefully it looks normal now. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out some technical things with my software. So I think I had my settings messed up from before. Okay, it looks normal, great. Looks good, sounds good. Okay, I think we are ready to go. So before I get started, if you are new to Stampin' Up! or are not familiar with our upcoming multiple promotions, I'm not gonna go over it all or go over all of it during my live, but I will have a post in a little bit across my social media platforms and on my blog that will explain all of the promotions that we have going on with some details. And if you don't subscribe to my newsletter already, I have a newsletter that will be going out with them in the morning or possibly very late this evening. And it will have all of the links for you in one place with an explanation of all of the things that will be going on. So there's that. This week, we are going to use the Sweet Citrus set, and I love this because it has a hybrid embossing folder, and I did not mark where it was in my catalog, so let me look in the index. It has been a whirlwind of a morning, and I forgot to mark it, and I'm just going past the index because my brain is moosh. Oh my gosh. I'm used to the index being so much bigger. Who remembers when the index in the catalog included everything under the sun? Okay, so it is on page 32. Here we go. Sorry. Hey, John. So nice to see you. Thanks for joining. And I'm hoping that the connection is okay because we have some more unnecessary paving going on. So I don't know if that's going to mess up my connection, but this is the sweet citrus stamp set. And there is dies and an embossing folder that go with it. And it is one of our hybrid embossing folders. You can see it right here. So it comes with dies and the folder. And if you didn't know, because I've seen some people use this and I don't think they do know the dies go in. Okay. Thank you, Tammy. If you could just keep me posted on if it's going wonky, I swear, go figure, right? Um, you cut and emboss at the same time, or you can, if you choose to, I have seen some people emboss, then cut, and you don't have to, you can do it all at once. So I'm actually going to show you that, but that is what we are using today. And I'm going to put this behind me. And I'll show you the cards real quick that we're going to make. So these are the cards that you will get the pieces for in the card kit. And this one is actually a really simple easel card that you can make. So hopefully I've got my camera down farther today and so I'm not used to how close in I have to be. Yes, I thought that was interesting as well, Patty. <laughs> Hence the name hybrid. But 
You heard it here, folks. You cut and emboss at the same time. So these are the cards that you will be able to make with your kits. So I will set those over here. And then I'm going to go ahead and I have pre-stamped most everything because there is quite a bit of stamping. So when you get, sorry, I have my bin in front of me, so I have to reach across. So when you get your card kits, you will have white card stock to stamp. And this is what you're going to want to stamp is the flowers and then these three different colors of melons, lemons, limes. I don't know. What do we call them? Citrus fruits. How about that? And then you can just die cut them and set them aside. Now, you may not end up needing every single piece, but you could always save it and use it for something else. So I am going to die cut these actually on screen because I figured that would, I could show you how I had them all stamped out and I could die cut them instead of stamping them all. But what I'm going to show you first is how the embossing folder and dies work together in case you have not seen that before. So this is the embossing folder. And then this die right here that cuts out the lemons, or not the lemons, the citrus fruits goes in your embossing folder. So when you have your embossing folder in front of you, I know, Patty, I love the happy colors. Make sure that the Stampin' Up! logo is to your right when your folder is open and your dies will fit right in here. And you'll notice that they fit because they kind of will bump up to this little edge in there. So once you've got that laid in there, you can go ahead and put your paper down and close up your embossing folder and you can run it through your machine. Now I just, right before I got on screen, I went ahead and just did some ink blending on this piece of paper with some lemon lolly and daffodil delight. So I'm just gonna grab my plates here And you can also stamp the images. I'm gonna have to move, I have to move this back because it's gonna bump into my little basket there. You can also stamp the images in boss and die cut them as well. Okay, such a small table over here. All right, let's see if I can get my machine to rust over here without getting in the way of everything. And then I'll show you what that looks like. Uh-oh, hold on friends. Oh, I hope I don't mess this up. I forgot to put, well, we're just gonna hope nobody bothers me. I forgot to put my um, phone on D&D. Okay, <laughs> go figure. Okay, so here are what the pieces look like once you have cut them out and embossed them at the same time. Hopefully you guys can see the embossing detail okay. They look very bright yellow on my screen. But I absolutely love this embossing folder. It just gives such gorgeous detail. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside for a second and try not to lose anything. Yes, I just love these. So we have another one, which is the doily. Okay, we have uh, tree rings. Tree rings is a hybrid. And we also have a delightful doily, which is a hybrid. And I have not played with delightful doily yet. But I'm going to go ahead and bore you to death with cutting out some citrus fruits. And we'll just do it all at once so that we don't have to sit here and watch the table move around multiple times. We'll just watch it move around multiple times all at once. Okay, and I need to grab a little post-it flag over here. Sorry about my chair. It is just very noisy and we are living on the surface of the sun today. So it was 70 degrees here at eight o'clock in the morning. And I know for some people they're like, yeah, yeah. But when you're not used to it, 
you know, it can kind of get to you. Yes, we have air conditioning, so thank God for that. But still being upstairs in my craft room when it's 900 degrees is not always fun. Okay, so let's put these through. And I'm rolling them back through because I have a bin in front of me and I can't get the, the platform to go all the way out. You get a lovely view of my hand. I know, Tammy. The weather has been crazy in some places. I feel so awful for the people that um, are dealing with all the smoke from the fires. We actually have a fire. Well, it's not here it, in, exactly in my area, but there's a fire in Washington that is causing evacuations in an area of Oregon known as Hood River. And we went through that several years ago when we had a fire near us in the last house that we lived in. And I've never been through anything like that. And I was just blown away at what the sky looks like and the smoke and oh my gosh, it was crazy. I know die cutting is not that fun to watch, sorry. I was like, do I, I didn't want to stamp everything and have it all die cut because some people might want to see how things are stamped out on the paper. So I don't know. If you're watching this on a replay, feel free to just skip on ahead. Okay, so we've got the yellow citrus fruits left to do and then our flowers. And the nice thing about the flowers and what Stampin' Up! has done in many of our die sets is include multiples of a die so that you can cut Wow, I got really close to the edge on that one. So that you can cut multiples, like I'll be able to cut two batches of flowers at once. Instead of just one at a time. So I do like that. Okay, so this is totally random, but I have a new favorite drink, but, and I, I love soda. Not all soda, but I love soda. And Tammy and her husband introduced me to strawberries and cream Dr. Pepper. Here is what it looks like. Well, in the bottle, obviously, it comes in cans too. If you're a soda person, and you like Dr. Pepper, you should definitely try this. It is amazing. I can't stop drinking it, which is a huge problem. And I'm only ordering it from 7-Eleven thinking that, oh, if I just order five bottles at a time, I won't drink as much. Yeah, right. All right. So here are our flowers. It is so good, Jenny. Oh my gosh. I just, I can't, I can't get enough of it. And I love that these flowers, when you stamp them, have the little dots that stamp as well, but I cut out all of the flowers. So, but we, we will create our own dots. I need to line this up. Oops, this guy did not stick down. The fun part of adhering all of your little dies to your paper. I have gone back to using post-it flags instead of the tape I was using because I noticed that they just work better. I've never had an issue with my post-it flags pulling up paper after I've die cut. And even though the Scotch repositionable tape works very well, so a few times I've had it pull up paper and a lot of times it's not that big of a deal if the, you know, dye isn't overly, you know, if it's just tiny or something, but nobody likes to die cut and then find out that their paper is torn. All right, let's get this hot mess through here. 
yeah, I'm really loving using the post-it flags. And I have a bunch. Um, Tracy, I don't think is on here, but she had sent me a bunch of post-it flags some time back. And so I am finally putting them to good use. Sorry, I'm just pulling all the tabs off screen over here. Sorry if you can hear um, any background noise. I think my, I don't know what my son is watching downstairs, but he is having the time of his life watching something funny. Okay, so we just have to cut one more bunch of flowers and one single flower, and then we will be done with this boring part. Maybe I won't do this next time. <laughs> so it is a lot of die cutting. But I've die cut anything else that needs to be die cut. Okay. You had a spam comment. I just, oh, fabulous. Thank you, Tammy, for doing that. I appreciate that. <laughs> what did it say? Or you can tell me later if you don't want to tell me now, but I swear. Just people at home like, oh, a random live video. Let's go make a weird comment. I think the repositionable tape would be um, good to use if you are using one of our masks. I actually have to emboss one more thing or emboss something, but I'm not going to do it. Well, I'm probably going to have to do it right now because, but I'll do it behind me so you don't have to watch. We just have to em emboss a strip of paper. Okay, so our first card in your kit when you get them in the mail you will get a regular card base first it was political then he sent gibberish oh awesome and then you will have a white panel that i did i not oh you know what ignore this was actually for that's actually for stamping lord have mercy we don't need to do that Okay, and then you're going to have a strip of lemon lolly. We're going to emboss this. And for the background circle, I pulled a piece from the Stargazer DSP. And I thought that was really pretty to go with the yellow or the lemon lolly. And then we have our sentiment strip and then all of our beautiful die cuts. So I am going to try to pick up these die cuts over here and I'm going to turn around and emboss this yellow piece of paper or lemon lolly I'm going to call it by its proper name get all my plates together probably should have just done all the embossing first as well but why not just make it more complicated Okay, so then we have our embossed piece. And before we adhere that, we're going to take our light Blackberry Bliss marker. And I am going to grab my grid paper really quick because I don't want to flick stuff on my mat. And we're just going to... Let's see, do I have, all right. I don't wanna flick it on the back, so I guess I'll fold it, even though this is the, not a good way to do it. We're just gonna do some random flicking here. Oh, is anybody tired of seeing me do this yet? 
And I don't have my grid paper on my mat today because it seems to look very strange in the screen. And so I don't know if it's as grainy for everybody else as it appears to me or not. So I just decided to forego it today. All right. I know I have, I have a problem with the splattering. So we're just going to adhere this right down the center. And then we will want our lemon lolly pieces. We won't need the full sized lemon. And we're going to need, I just need to throw all of my die cuts in this little bin here. You know, did I, wait a minute. I feel like I'm missing something. I don't think I cut lemon, I don't think I cut um, melon mambo flowers. And I know I, mm, I don't know what I did. Okay, give me one second. I, we need melon mambo flowers and somehow all I managed to die cut was a bunch of blue ones. Okay, so guess we'll use this piece of paper that I didn't think I was gonna need. And I will get my foam mat, possibly. Well, I don't know where, oh, here it is. I always think I'm so prepared and then I'm never prepared. Okay, so I guess we are gonna do some stamping. All right, so we're gonna need to stamp some melon mambo flowers. And then they are going to have lemon lolly centers. My gosh, more die cutting friends. Oh, hello, I've got a, a post-it flag stuck to my arm. So we're gonna need two littles and a big and a medium. So it looks like we're good there. And then this will actually give me a chance to show you something cool they did. Well, I think it's cool anyway. Other people probably don't. But one of the neat things that they did was, so obviously, I'm oh, sorry, I'm off screen. Obviously we have, you know, a center for the flowers. But one neat thing that they did was they gave us this little stamp that is two dots and it stamps the center of the small flowers at the same time. Oops, there went Tom. You like the plain background, Patty? I like it too, but you know, I'm kind of plain and simple when it comes to stamping. Either that or it just looks like someone threw up all over my project. Okay. I cleaned my chamois before I started. Go me. I also cleaned my blocks last night because I took a, a hint from Patty when she posted her pictures of cleaning her blocks. But I have a hand sanitizer that does not contain alcohol. And I'm wondering if you use alcohol, if it works better, if it gives it more shine or cleans it better. So I have alcohol wipes, but they're really small. And it seems that it takes me a lot longer to get my blocks clean with such a small thing to work with. So I'm wondering if I need hand sanitizer, a different one. I don't use hand sanitizer other at all, but I had this non-alcohol one 
sitting around for if anybody wanted hand sanitizer. Oh boy. Okay, where's my clear plate? Does anybody else ever lose their clear plate or is it just me? Good heavens. I've seen some, not, not that we have, but I've seen some that are different colors. There's pink, there's blue. And I'm like, that'd be so much easier for me to see. Kind of like how they tint contacts now so that you can, well, the theory is you can see them if you drop them. I don't know how well that works for me sometimes. Okay. Here we go. Sometimes I wipe with alcohol wipes later after sanitizer. I know Patty do a plain background. Message me for a link later, please. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Yours is from Bath and Body Works. I think it has alcohol based. Yeah, probably. The the one that I have is made with essential oils. And so it uses this one particular essential oil as the antibacterial agent. This is a cool idea, like different colors for different sizes. Yes. Okay. I think we're ready to finish this card. So we're going to adhere our circle. And if you, you know, don't say you're looking at this and you are like, well, I want to make this, but I don't have stargazer paper, then you could ink blend or you could just use a plain color of cardstock. You can use what you have. I just, I like to try to mash things up once in a while to show that you don't have to always stick with what's co what comes together. And the stargazer paper has some really great patterns on it. Okay. So now we're going to adhere our slices of lemon and I'm trying to do like my friend Tammy and I'm trying to hold my pieces while I adhere glue instead of stick them down, like have them down on something and then have to pick them back up. We're just going to put that one down. I just love the, the Blackberry Bliss with Lemon Lolly. The original piece that I used from, or on my, my sample card, I know I have dimensionals in here somewhere. I made this whole entire bin to be really organized. Here they are. Anyways, the first piece that I used was... A quite a bit darker. And so I thought for the one I did for the class, I would use one that is, has different shades and isn't as dark. And when I get done putting this together, I'll show you the difference. You can let me know which one you prefer. I think I like the, the, the dark one is a very nice contrast. I think I might like this one better. Come on, Tom. Well, I, I don't know, Tammy. I mean, I was doing what I thought worked for me, and then I would end up with so much glue on my hands. It just didn't seem like it was really working all that well. And you know what? I have dropped it plenty of times. So we're just going to put our flowers in various spots. I don't think there's any method that would keep me safe from dropping things, honestly. I just love the little flowers in here. They're so cute. I really, 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 really struggled with this set when it first came out. And then I decided, you know what? We're going to use that. Okay, so we're going to use the sentiment, enjoy the sweeter things in life. And I have a question, which I know I could Google this and easily find out. Um, but I'm going to ask because maybe somebody else wants to know. So one of my stamps in this set has the back 
got something on it, maybe embossing powder or something that kind of removes the stickiness. So it doesn't want to stick to my block anymore. How do you get the back of your photopolymer stamps to stick to your block again? Wash them. All right, I'm just doing that because there's some frayed edges and I want to make sure that they're not looking too ugly there. Wash it in warm water and soap. Yes, Patty always makes the best, best, best cards. She is notorious for making me buy stuff I didn't think I needed. So I'm always really proud when I can return the favor. Okay. And then we are going to stamp the sentiment in Memento Black. Oh boy. I just inked my finger. And then we are going to shoot up a quick prayer. And, oops. We are going to hope that we get this on straight. Yay. Actually, I'm flipping it over because some of the ink is smudgy. I know. <laughs> and then we'll just pick the best side. Alcohol will clean them also. Okay, perfect. Thanks, John. Patty says, Tammy, you're responding to her questions before she asks, asks them. My feed must be delayed. Oh, how funny. <laughs> Tammy's reading my mind. There. Okay. All right. So I will try both of those. When I was using, it was um, the large stamp that stamps the inside of the citrus and it just fell right off my block. And I was like, oh no. Okay, so this we are also going to put up with our dimensionals. Whoops. Or you could just need to see, Patty, if um, you're watching on YouTube, you might just need to see if you can fast forward a little bit. All right, there we go. And there is our first card. So here is the sample that has the darker background. And then the one with the more ombre Blackberry Bliss. And when I send kits, your, you know, your, the, what your paper looks like will vary because I am cutting the pieces from a single piece of paper and when it's an ombre piece, the gradient is different based on where you cut. Oh, Patty lost us. So they're both blackberry, Tammy, but it's just a darker side of the paper. So do you like the one that's really dark or do you like the one that's lighter? Well, Patty, I hope you can find me again. I'm so sorry. Okay. Next card, we are going to have our typical A2 card base. Oh, the lighter one. Hey, Heather. Nice to see you. I don't know if you saw the first card we made. Patty got me back. Woohoo! And she likes lighter. Okay. I'll show them again at the end. So we have our typical white A2 card base, and then we have a piece of paper from the Bright and Beautiful DSP. And then obviously another piece for you to stamp on, but I'm not gonna need the whole thing because we are going to stamp, thanks a bunch. Whoops. And, why? Okay. Oh, I couldn't find my bin that has my blocks in it. Well, guess what? I threw an envelope on top. No wonder. So we are going to stamp Thanks a Bunch in Pretty Peacock.
And we are going to die cut this with a square from the stylus shapes dies. So you can always cut it first and then stamp inside the square, or you can just leave enough room on your paper to make sure that the square will fit. So guess what? Who didn't bring their dies out? That would be me. All right, so I'm gonna do this first because we are gonna do some more splattering and I don't necessarily want to do it all over the paper. I'm going to pull out my little mini. And just center my square around my sentiment the best I can. And send it through. Oh, you can do it. Okay. Set those aside and then I'm going to grab my grid paper again really quick because we're going to flick some ink from our light pretty peacock. Oh wait, yes, light pretty peacock, I think. Yep. It, it looks a little bit darker when you first flick it on the paper, but it's not. It dries to a nice light, pretty peacock. So we've got our card base we will fold and then we'll get our DSP adhered down. Okay, and we can put our little square on here. Now I'm not putting glue all the way around the border because I am going to stick some leaves behind this. Well, it was gonna be behind this corner. I put glue there, but that's okay. I don't, I'll just peel it up if I have to. I was look, seeing backwards. So we're going to take our little leaves here and we're just going to pop them in this corner and I'm just going to lift this up and put some glue on it. And then we will need our lime slice and that is going to get popped up on dimensionals that I don't oh I put them back in my bin how organized of me hey Kathy nice to see you thanks for popping in All right, so we're gonna put our lemons, our lime slice there in the corner, and then we're gonna need some of our flowers that we cut out of pool party. And they have pretty peacock centers. So I just need to find Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell that there's one, there's like a large one and a medium one. And sometimes it's kind of hard to tell which is the large one and which one is the medium one, well, at least for me. So I think I have two large ones on there right now. So no, there's one large one. So let's start adhering some of these. 
I suppose it really doesn't matter. You know, one of the reasons that I keep my nails short is because I can't pick up anything if I have nails of any type of length. But it appears I can't pick up things without having nails anyway. It's like, why, <laughs> why is it such a struggle just to pick up a piece of paper? is this is not the there we go oopsie oh, a lot of glue on that one I'm just gonna tuck one kind of back in there and then we're gonna put on another little one and then for embellishments this week I am using the flat backed adhesive pearls. I like to call them oyster pearls. I just love these. No, oh, okay. I guess he wanted to be used. on you can do it and there we go I know me too Tammy they're gorgeous and that is card number two and then our last one is the fun fold I'm trying to figure out where I oh my gosh one of these days I will be much more organized than I am right now I feel like I'm always hunting for something Okay, then our next card is the fun fold. Ouch. So with this kit, you'll get your card base and it will have two score marks. And then you'll have these other bits and bobs. So these two or these three pieces are going to be what go at the bottom to make sure that your easel stays up when someone opens the card. And then one of these pieces was for stamping on. And then the other one is for embossing. So I'm gonna go ahead and emboss, use the embossing folder to emboss an entire panel of basic white. So there's our panel of basic white. Oh my gosh, another notification. Okay. And that is going to go on top of our pretty peacock piece here. Thanks, Kathy. I'm glad you like it. Oops, I'm not even on all the way on screen, sorry. So you're just gonna have about an eighth of an inch of a border when you put this panel down. And we'll let that sit for a minute. And then the way that this works is this is going to be where your panel goes. Well, actually that's not gonna be where your panel goes. That's going to be, I knew I was going to forget this the minute that I <laughs> started talking about it. So you're going to go ahead and fold like that. So this is just a regular piece that you would cut for an A2 card, but it has two different score lines. And what you're going to do is you're going to adhere your panel to this. No, 
Wait, hold on, friends. I knew I was going to. This was so easy when I did it in my head. Sorry, I, that's because I've got this folded the wrong way. Okay, there we go. So it's going to go like that. Then you're going to want to put your panel, only glue it to this section here. I mean, the simplest fold in the world. And my brain goes, let's look at this backwards. And I don't know why that's on there, but we'll get that off with our sand eraser. So only that bottom half. So that when it closes, it's like this. And then we will put these other pieces down here at the bottom. And the reason that I have two pieces of basic white to go on top of the pretty peacock is because this just gives it a little more um, height so that the easel will stand up better. So let's go ahead and stamp one of the pieces here before we adhere it down. And we're gonna go ahead and stamp in Memento Black sending you a big squeeze. Oh boy, that is crooked as all get out. Okay, here's another random question. When you ink your stamp, are you more likely to do what I just did and apply the ink to the stamp with the stamp facing up? Or do you have your ink pad down on your table and you put your stamp in it? So let's go ahead and glue these two pieces together and then we will adhere them to the pretty peacock. And I stamped it off to the side a little bit because we are going to put a piece of melon on one side and we don't want it to cover the words. Depends on the stamp or sometimes how juicy my ink pad is. Okay. Now I know a lot of people stamp different than I do. I, when I started stamping, I only made one off cards. So I wasn't making um, a bunch of cards that were the same design. So I never got used to having all my ink pads open and just, you know, like an assembly line. The first time I ever did anything like that was the swap for our um, soiree that we had last month. And then this is just going to line up with the bottom here. And so you'll just see that that, that will help hold that up. Oh, once I, I'll burnish the other, I need to burnish this other fold so that it lays flat. But there we go. So now let's work on the front. So we will have some pieces that I forgot to take out of the envelope, maybe. Okay, no. So let's stamp our sentiment. So our sentiment is going to be, have a zesty birthday. And it's going to go on this pool party strip here. Oh, you know what? <laughs> In typical fashion, you guys, I glued this down and did not put the ribbon on it. Wow. You wouldn't believe what I did in my video for Saturday. <laughs> Quite funny. So 
totally forgot the ribbon because I didn't put the ribbon in my bin. So we're just going to do something in case anybody else makes the same mistake I did. So there is our sentiment. So we need ribbon across the front here and we also need it to be, I wonder if I can peel this up, no. So we also need it to be, I'm trying to figure out how this would make sense to do this. Mm, I can't believe I did that. So I think what we'll do is we'll put some across the front here and I'll just put it down with some stamp and seal, but technically it's supposed to go behind the, the cardstock. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick some of this on the front here. And cut this off as close to the edge as I can get it. And it's not, as long as you have sharp scissors, no one's going to notice. I just got myself some new scissors for cutting um, ribbon. Okay, so. Then we'll go ahead and we'll start assembling the rest of it. And then we will put a bow on it towards the end when I have an idea of where I'm going to want to place that bow. So we're just going to adhere our vellum circle down. And we're going to need two of our citrus pieces for the outside. We'll need this piece and this piece. Oh, sorry, guys. Give me one second. My cat wants to be let out. There you go, buddy. He heard the front door, so he assumes somebody is here. Okay, and then we just need some flowers. Get my little one out of here. Oh, thank you, Robin. I'm glad you like it. Holy cow. Can't believe I just, you know, forgot like, hey, put the ribbon around first. Typical. <laughs> Let's forget a step. It's so funny. I always think I'm so prepared for my lives and then I, it, I'm it, i bound to forget something. Okay, and then we have our zesty birthday. I'm gonna move these ribbon scissors because I do not want to cut paper with them. And I'm just gonna kind of angle the ends of my little banner strip here. And that is gonna go across wherever you want it, like this. And you could pop it up if you wanted to. And then I'm gonna take my ribbon and I'm just gonna tie a bow and we will just put it on with a glue dot or something. Now, one thing that you could do, and I would demonstrate this, but I think it would just take too long, is one of the things I do for a faux bow is if I put ribbon across something like this, 
instead of bringing it all the way around and tying it, I will take a piece of thread, like white thread, and I will put it underneath, say here, where I want it to look like my bow has been tied. And I'll just, you know, tie like a tiny little knot so that the, this part's all squinched together. And then I'll just put the bow on top and it looks like it was tied. So we will go ahead and grab glue dots and get this adhered down. And I'll oftentimes just sit here and fiddle with this because I'm not, I'm not the best at tying bows. Okay, and we'll trim the ends off. It really comes in handy, especially to Jenny, if you, um, you know, tie, say, fancy bows. Like I have a 10 second bow maker and I forget to use it all the time. But let's say you want to tie like a triple loop bow. Well, I mean, that's going to be really difficult if you're putting ribbon, all you know, wrapping it around your card like we traditionally would and then tying a bow. So if I ever do a fancy bow, that's what I do. I use that faux tie trick and then just adhere the, you know, triple loop, double loop, whatever bow on top. Yes, I love this ribbon too, Kathy. I'm so glad we still have it. Okay, so then we are going to need our melon, our melon mambo melon. And we're going to adhere that over here. And we're gonna put a flower over here. And we will put a few more of our pearls down. Let's see. And then our easel card is finished. So it folds flat so you can put it in a regular envelope. And then when the recipient receives it, and there's room enough inside to write a note. And then it stands up really nice because you've created that lip there for the easel. Okay, so that was card three. Let me scoot some of this stuff. Who am I kidding? Let me throw a bunch of this stuff in the bin to get it out of the way so I can bring in the other cards. I swear, I just need bins all around for throwing stuff in. Okay, and then let's grab the other two. So this was the second card that we made. And then our first card. I thought it was great too, Jenny, and it's really easy. Like I've said before, I really struggle with fun folds. I mean, there's a fun fold and there's a fancy fold, and I really struggle with fun folds. So fancy folds are a whole other thing. Um, but I thought this was really easy. <laughs> Didn't appear that way when I first started doing it, but um, because I got myself confused, but it's very easy if you want to do an easel card. So these are the three cards that we are making in this week's kit. And if you would like to get the kit for free, you can use the host code down there at the bottom of the screen. That's my current host code. And when you place an order of $35 or more and use that host code, I will send you the card kits for free and you get enough to make six cards to each of each design. And if you spend $50 in my online store and use the host code, you will get a pack of these flat adhesive back pearls 
one that does not look like this, obviously, because yours will be brand new and full. And if you purchase 150 or more, please do not use the host code because you will get the benefits of Stampin' Rewards. Just email me or reach out to me and let me know you'd like the class and I will send it to you. So that is what I have for you this week. I hope that you enjoyed these cards and that they inspired you to create. And I will see everybody next week, same time, same place with a brand new set of cards for a weekly class. Thank you, Patty. I'm glad that you like them. Thank you everyone for spending time with me this afternoon. It means the world to me. And please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel if you'd like to, that would be great. I am trying to grow my channel a bit or just even liking my video helps a lot too. Thank you, John. I'm glad you like them. And you are so good at fun folds. <laughs> Your cards are always amazing when you send them out to us. I'm always impressed by them. And I, but I, sometimes I'm like, oh, I could take this apart and figure out how he did it, but then I don't want to destroy it. So, but they're always wonderful to receive. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. And I will see you on the other side. Thank you. Goodbye.